All right, guys, so today is kind of the, well, it's the day after the iPhone 12 announcement. So the iPhone 12 mini, the iPhone 12, the iPhone 12 Pro, and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So a whole bunch of variations for you and I to ponder about in regards to which one we think we may want. And this is something that I want to kind of talk about in this video is maybe why you would buy one versus the other or actually some of the differences between the pro line and the standard iphone 12 line and the iphone 12 line encapsulates i like using that word lately encapsulates the iphone 12 mini and the iphone 12 because the big difference between those two is size and of course the iphone 12 pro line i'll talk about and it encapsulates the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. But primarily, I'm going to talk about when I'm comparing the two, just so you guys kind of know, the iPhone 12 6.1 inch and the iPhone 12 Pro 6.1 inch, because I think those are the two phones right now that most people that are thinking of, like which one are going to be kind of talking about. Because if you want a large phone, you're going to get the Max. And if, of course, you want a really small phone, you're going to get the Mini and you're going to be happy with it. So if we look at those two 6.1 inch iPhone 12s and the Pro together, uh, that's I think where we need to do the comparison. And I found it really funny. For those of you that didn't watch the Apple keynote, I do encourage you to go watch it because uh, there's, there's some great information for one in regards to a lot of the specs of these phones and some of the new features that are coming out for these phones, you know, different photography modes, the 5G, all that kind of stuff. And I, I do encourage you guys to go watch those if you're at all interested or go on YouTube and watch some of the, you know, the iPhone 12 launch in 12 minutes or, or whatever it is. But I did find that there was a huge bit of um, marketing in this video, the Apple video that I found actually really interesting to watch because of the way they, they didn't, say anything wrong but it was really neat how they omitted things and talked about things somewhere else so i'll do a for instance they started off of course talking about uh, the 5g network and how all the iphone 12s were going to be getting this feature really cool across the board 5g everybody's getting it now i did like the feature again across the board and all the iphone 12s is that that 5g is kind of aware and looks at what you're doing on your device to figure out if it actually requires 5G. Because if it doesn't, then it will switch down to LTE so that you can conserve power, which is good. But there were a couple things that I found really interesting. So they did this spiel, right? Their presentation, which is what they're supposed to be doing. And they went through the iPhone 12 and they talked about, you know, the new shape, the new sizes, uh, the, the, like the waterproofing, they talked about the dual cameras, they talked about getting these updated cameras, uh, et cetera, et cetera, to make the iPhone 12 again appealing because I think the iPhone 12 is going to be the phone that the majority of people kind of buy. They talked about the new blue color, of course, all the variations, but even in a lot of their wording, I found it really funny where they talked about these five new colors. Well, I'm like, well, they're not five new colors. Um, they're, they're really two new colors because they've always had a black, they've always had a white, they've always had a red. So really they had the blue and the green and they actually had a green, but they're different blue and green. So it's really two new colors. It's, it's again, just really interesting how they, they talk. Apple's genius in regards to their marketing and the way they use language to kind of, I don't want to say spin the truth sometimes but actually just kind of emphasize what needs to be emphasized but the big one of course on this really for for a lot of us was things like the camera and the processor and they and they talked about those not near as much as they talked about them i think when they went to the iphone 12 pro but they kind of skimmed on them they did talk about the camera on the 12 being an upgrade from the 11 now that they are using a faster sensor but this is where I found it really neat is that when they went to the iPhone 12 Pro, they really started talking about all these features. So I actually have the iPhone 12 Pro 
up here. And a lot of this wasn't talked about in the 12, but it was talked about in the 12 Pro. Again, a lot of it was in regards to taking these photos and they really went into the camera because this is a pro photographer's camera. Okay. And, and it can be if you use it because again, this is a tool and I agree with that. But this is what I found funny is how they omitted certain things in the 12 and talked about them in the 12 Pro, even though the 12 has these features. They just decided not to talk about them. You may have looked at the 12 Pro keynote and been like, well, I want that and I want that and I want that. So I should get the 12 Pro, not realizing that the 12 also has them. So let's kind of look at this iPhone 12 Pro. You can watch the event. Again, I encourage you guys to go here, take a look, kind of peruse through this stuff. Less bezel, more screen. Yep. The 12, less bezel, more screen. Now this one does, and it's made of different materials. The iPhone 12 is made of aluminum. This is made or wrapped around the edging is made of stainless steel. And of course, this has a more finished look, I believe. So if status plays a little bit where you want it to have that look what I have, then this is definitely going to look without question nicer. I think if you like that stainless steel look, which a lot of people do, has this nice gold. They've gone away from space gray now and they've called it graphite, not space gray, graphite. Sounds fancier than space gray. Here, here, let's go through here for a minute. So they both use XDR display. Okay, they both have pretty much, as far as I know, the same display. They both have ceramic shield. Both have it. Same level of protection on both of these. Surgical grade. Now this is a difference. This is that stainless steel we talked about. So the iPhone 12 has aluminum. This has stainless steel. Is it a big difference? Probably not. Is it cosmetically different? 100%. Does this look shiny? Yeah, it, it, and it changes the colors. This has this like gold or graphite and the the blue, but it's it's not like a I don't want to say paint because the aluminum is not either. But it just has a different texture to it, I guess. I do like the stainless steel look without question. Blows other phones out of the water. Industry leading IP68. Yeah, iPhone 12 got has that too. We're good. Four finishing touches. These are the colors. Say hello to wireless, 5G. Again, 5G is across the board on all of them. Uh, continue down here. Let's see, A14 Bionic. Again, all the way down to the mini. They all have the exact same A14 Bionic chip. So they will focus on certain things on the iPhone 12 Pro's page, but they're the same on the iPhone 12. They, they just may not focus on that and talk about it as much. Again, I find it really interesting how they do this so 50 percent faster 11.8 trillion yep 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 because it's the a14 they use the same processor now here's where some of the differences are and this is in regards to the cameras so the iphone 12 pro and the 12 pro max are going to be the only cameras that have the lidar sensor so this lidar sensor this lidar camera is or was first introduced in the ipad pro this is something that if you are going to be looking at this iPhone as a, a camera, really it's going to be your camera, then this could be probably one of the reasons for upgrading. And this is designed for the camera to be able to sense uh, what's in the room and actually be able to almost like 3D map out the environment. Now this can become really, really important. And they talked about it when it was first coming out in regards to things like augmented reality, being able to place like virtual things or augmented items in your room, in your living space, whatever. Very cool. And being able to just map out the design of a room, things that could take days to do can now take hours. So that's in itself really, really neat. But for someone that may not be using it in a professional aspect like commercial for doing 3d mapping it also can help benefit anything in regards to focusing and this really plays a big role when you and i are trying to use our camera to focus in both video and photography in low light so as the light goes down uh, cameras have a lot harder of a time they have a bigger issue uh, focusing because they can't detect edges and they can't detect contrast because it's just not there so the LiDAR scanner is going to be a huge benefit for that. And I don't know all the crazy technical information about it, but basically it tries to measure distance on everything. And that's what's used for focus is distance. So it's super good for that. 
And again, if you're going to be using this camera for photography and videography, especially if you're going to use it in low light scenarios, then this by itself could be the reason that you go to the pro. And for me, it may very well be the reason that I, I think I'm going to go with the pro. LiDAR technology scans the surface of Mars and now your living room. I'm sure it's not exactly the same technology, but close enough. But here's a great idea. See how it's scanning everything? You guys, you can, can go to Apple's website and kind of read all this. Very, very cool. LiDAR scanner is really neat. I think it's something that we're going to see a lot of third-party software taking advantage of in regards to cameras and just detection of 3D space around us. Pro camera system, a new day for night mode. Guess what? It's it's kind of the same, except that the iPhone 12 only has two cameras versus having that telephoto camera. So if you require a telephoto camera, without question, you're going to either go to the iPhone 12 Pro or you're going to go to the iPhone 12 Pro Max. But all those adjustments really are, are the same in regards to the ultra wide and the wide lens that are on the 12 and the 12 Pro. Now, the big difference is actually between the 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max, where the 12 Pro Max, and you may have heard this term on traditional style cameras, is something called IBIS, where it's uh, in-body image stabilization. And this is kind of the technology on the iPhone 12 Pro Max, because of having that extra room in the body, because it's larger, that the sensor itself actually can move around. And it's designed, of course, so that the sensor moves to help with image stabilization. So if you're wanting that ultimate camera with the utmost best image stabilization out there, then go with the Pro Max because it's the only one that has it. And it's something that we're starting to see again in traditional cameras. The camera I'm shooting with right now, uh, which is a Canon EOS R6, has IBIS. So again, in-body image stabilization. So that enhances the ability to shoot in low light. So 12 Pro Max. Cameras Maximus. Okay, I'm with you. Again, out of all this stuff, basically uh, five time optical range because it has the zoom. I get it. If you need the zoom, you're going to this. Uh, new sensor shift optical image stabilization. And I believe, as far as I know, this is only on the Max. So only the Max has this. So if you're going to the biggest phone, then, then you're on your way. Portraits that came out at night. So we're talking about improved night mode. The iPhone 12 has this same thing. We're good coming down here more more night mode more night mode deep fusion even like the the iPhone 11 had deep fusion So again, it's on it's on all these keep going through portrait modes getting better, which is good But again, we're talking about machine learning all of this is in the 12 more detail in the blink of an eye Okay, smart HDR 3 if we come here to the iPhone 12 This is the iPhone 12 and even this is kind of interesting that they did the iPhone 12 Pro on a black background and the iPhone 12 on a white background, making that iPhone 12 Pro just seem more elegant and seem more photography based. Because even for those of us, a lot of us that shoot or do photos, you get to see more contrast and, and putting it on a black background just seems to add so much to a photo. So I even found that interesting that the 12 Pro was on black whereas this is on white. Just kind of going through here, iPhone 12, this is the A14, 5G, yeah, we're good. This is talking about, right, same thing, thinner, smaller, lighter, less bezel, yeah, I'm good with you. World's smallest, there's that ceramic shield. They get different colors, but they have aluminum versus the actual stainless steel. There's that waterproofing, five fresh finishes, yeah, we're good, back to 5G talking now about the actual specs of the processor but they don't go in as much detail on the 12 as they do on the 12 pro's website but it's the same right it says right there same chip as the iphone 12 pro xdr display same deal dual cameras instead of the triple okay right ultra wide so there it is wide and ultra wide there's that that night mode there's there's deep there's deep fusion there's the smart HDR. There's the portrait mode. And we get to video. Same ideas in video, right? Video, low lights, camera action. And, and again, when you watch the keynote from Apple, they don't talk about uh, Dolby Vision or anything like that with the iPhone 12. They don't talk about it because it's such a big deal. They only bring it out 
when they start talking about the iPhone 12 Pro, that it has this Dolby Vision recording and HDR and all the magic that comes along with it, which honestly is super impressive. It's ridiculously impressive and I'm super excited to be able to try this to see what it looks like. But you own a film studio, first camera ever to record in Dolby Vision. So guess what? The iPhone 12 has it too, but they don't spend much time on it. So if you're just flipping through this page, you may just very well just pass it. MagSafe on the 12. Yep, we got it. Beautifully stackable. We got it. And then we get into turbocharge and your accessories. I just find like when, when on the 12 site, it's like one page, one picture. It has HDR3. Boom. One picture. We're good. It has Deep Fusion. Kind of one picture. Boom. On with it. It has Dolby Vision recording. Boom. One slide. Keep going. Here though, like Smart HDR, one photo, two photos, right? Shot on iPhone. Like they've spent so much time and it's no different really than the iPhone 12. It's just that they want it to appear like it is. Snapshot of each camera, right? Now, this they don't talk about and, and I'm really curious because they do talk about this Apple Pro Raw, which really looks interesting. Now, I don't see any reason that this won't come out on the iPhone 12. The chip is the same, the cameras are the same, except that it lacks the actual telephoto. The graphics are the same. This should come out on both. It should, it should just be a software upgrade that gets added, but they only show it on the 12 Pro page. That to me, I'd like to know more because again, there's no reason that shouldn't come out on the 12th, but will it, uh, that that'll be interesting. I think that'll be interesting all to itself. Uh, Dolby vision. Yep. Well, watch how much time they spend on this Dolby vision. Wow. Big page, first camera, airplay, right? They just everything. Now every night is movie night because we're still in Dolby vision. Right, it, they just look how much time they are spending in this. HDR, we're back to HDR, true depth. I think for those of us that are looking at these two cameras, for the iPhone 12 or the iPhone 12 Pro, we're kind of in that scenario where we're like, do we wanna spend here in Canada um, that extra about $300? So when you look at the two, uh, build quality, very, very similar to each other. Screen size, identical. Screen quality, identical. Uh, processor, identical. Um, storage can be a little bit because you can get 128 gigs on the iPhone 12, but it makes you jump a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. Uh, the iPhone 12 Pro comes default, right out of the, the, the starting point, comes out at 128 gigs. Um, so that lowers the price between the two a little bit more. Both have 5G. Really, as far as I can tell, the only reason you and I would go to the 12 Pro is um, we like the look of the 12 Pro. We like we like the stainless steel. We like the gold. We like those stainless steel colors. And I get it. A lot of us buy a phone as almost like a, a statement. It's a, a match to our appearance. It has to go with what we wear. I get it. That, that's that's that can be reason enough. Uh, but the big one is going to be in regards to photography. If you don't care about photography or if photography, it's cool, but you use it just as a travel camera and you're like, I just, I just take pictures. Then just get the 12 because are you going to notice the LiDAR scanner? Probably not. Are you going to notice the lack of a telephoto? Probably not. I've seen so many people that have a 12 pro that live in this house that I don't think have ever changed the camera from the standard to the wide or to the telephoto. They just, they just don't do it. It's just a click. We're good. Right. Then again, why, why spend the extra money on the pro? There's just nothing there. Other than that, all the other features seem to be the same. I've been going through these two sites for the last day, just trying to figure out what really separates these two phones in, in that space where they're both the 6.1 inches, 12 to 12 Pro. For $300, is the telephoto lens 
a big enough reason to upgrade with the LiDAR scanner? And for some of us, the answer is going to be yes. For me, it may very well be that, and it's not even the telephoto, it's the LiDAR scanner. That one's kind of got me. And this whole pro raw thing that I'm super curious about, and they don't talk about it on the 12 site and nobody really seems to know. So that one's got me too. So I'm thinking for me, as weird as it sounds, I think the 12 pro is where I'm going to go. And that's strictly because I do use this device so heavily as a camera outside of all the other cameras I have. Now, I don't know if this video made it better or worse for a lot of you, um, because I would say for 80% of the people that are on the fence between these two phones, the 12 will probably be everything you need it to be. For 20%, if you're definitely in that contemplation mode where you're really like, no, but I think a telephoto would be good. And I think there's a lot of times that I do shoot at night. And I think there's a lot of times that I want to have that telephoto and shooting video because I can't get close enough to it. If you're in that space, I think, then jumping to the 12 Pro may not may not be a bad thing, especially well if you can afford it, right? Yeah, it's a it's a tough one. I I do think the iPhone 12 is going to be the bigger seller of the two, without question. I think it's the one that most people are going to go to because I don't think there's that big of a difference. So if you need the best iPhone that's on the market right now, get the iPhone 12 Pro. Well, get the get the Max because it's the best one. And the only reason I say that is because of that sensor stabilizer that's built in the camera. I think that's kind of cool. Not that big a deal for me. Uh, and I and I don't like a phone that big. So I'm pretty sure I've talked myself into the 6.1 inch iPhone Pro. Yeah. All right, guys. Again, if this made it worse, leave some comments down below. Let me know if you guys are in this conundrum, I guess, of trying to figure out which you like more or which one you should get. Because it's always interesting to kind of talk about it. Fire questions, fire comments. Do whatever you need. I always try to answer to everybody's comments because it's, it's just it's just better for all of us. It helps me too. It helps me make a decision when you guys ask questions. And I'm like, I never thought about that. So leave them down below and I'm, and I'm going. This video way longer than I wanted it to be. I'll talk to you guys later.